In the last video we talked about fixturing and how using a couple offsets you can set up your work coordinates relative to your absolute machine coordinates. Now that works great for your X and Y, however it doesn't work so well for your Z. And it is perfectly possible to go ahead and put like an NPN proximity sensor on your carriage and you know have it home to the top or have it home to the bottom and know exactly where your carriage is and have absolute machine coordinates for your carriage. However, it doesn't work so well in practicality because the end of your blade uh, in a truck system is always going to be different. So for example, let's say I take this end mill out and I put it back in and when I tighten this chuck down, that height of the tool sticking out of the collet there is always going to be different. Therefore, you can't always know exactly where the end of your tool is based on where the machine is. That is why we have to set up a relative uh, position every time whenever we uh, whenever we align to start cutting and to start a new project. And so uh, up till now what I have been doing is I have been using my fixtures and that's been providing my coordinates for the X and Y but I have not been doing it uh, for the Z. That's been manually jogging it up and down, touching, using the paper method where you, you know, you lower your bit down and you, you know, try to see, try to get a piece of paper to move and, you know, nudge it up, nudge it down. And that works, but again, it's time consuming. That's where the touch plate comes in. Now this is a, obviously a very high tech touch plate. It is a uh, piece of half inch aluminum and it, um, uh, is uh, very well secured by a piece of duct tape to speaker wire that goes up to a terminal block that's behind my carriage there and up and over the wires over to my breakout board and so uh, I'm gonna replace this with something better it's coming I just uh, for now uh, it's just temporary and uh, I just wanted to get it up and get the concept going before I fully implement that I haven't fully implemented this system yet I'm just starting to now I'm very excited about it I think it's gonna save me a lot of time and frustration Anyways, so the way a touch plate works is this is a 5 volt charged plate. And uh, it's wired to a breakout board. And it comes up through the wire and there's a uh, terminal block back there. It comes all the way up over here to my secondary breakout board right here. Now I have two breakout boards. I have a breakout board that's dedicated just for input. You don't have to do this. You can use your original breakout board. But I have a lot of buttons and switches and stuff. So that's why I have a secondary. This is set up under Mach 3, and if you go into your ports and pins, there is a uh, uh, there is an input called probe, and you set uh, and you can set that to the input on your breakout board. Now my breakout board is set, uh, I believe it's for a, I believe it's called a pull up uh, resistor. Now um, it, I think I might be backwards on, I might be pulled down, but I think it's pull up in that that it's a sends out a five volt signal, and as long as that plate is 5 volts, uh, it's called, you would consider like a, um, a logical zero or a not active. Um, when that plate hits ground, and uh, for my machine, not all machines are like this, but my, uh, my router bit is grounded through my spindle to my machine. And uh, so when this plate comes in contact with the bit, uh, it closes the circuit, the uh, plate goes to ground, Mach 3 senses that, and it uh, sends a flag in, uh, in the system. So one thing is when you're setting up your touch plate, before you test it for the first time, always, always, always test it first. And bring your, you know, look at your uh, Mach 3. So if we go over here to ports and pins, uh, in your diagnostics tab, let's say here, diagnostics, and if you look, uh, uh, port 1, pin current state, input signals current state. You look in here, these are all your inputs in uh, Mach 3 for your breakout boards. I believe the top one is the first breakout board and the second one is your second breakout board. But each of these represents a pin on your inputs. Now it's okay if uh, you don't know exactly what these are. The machine knows what they are and in ports and pins that's where you configure it. Now you won't be able to see it right now, but by taking this and touching the bit, it closes that circuit and uh, there's a light that goes out over there and you can't see that but it's very important that you figure that out first because if you don't you could potentially uh, uh, ram your uh, your machine into the work piece or into your board and that's just not a good thing to do so once you have Mach 3 configured 
and you have a pin dedicated uh, for your touch probe. You have to configure a script for this. And now to do this, uh, first you go ahead and download the uh, script off the internet, and I stole it from somebody who I'm pretty sure stole it from somebody else. It's out there. In fact, I uh, will probably put a link to it in my descriptions here. If you go to Operator on the, uh, on the uh, file menu there, and uh, go down and hit, uh, which one is it? It's uh, Edit Button Script. Now you notice that certain buttons on Mach 3 are flashing now. Go down here to Auto Tool Zero. This is going to bring up a window. Now this is your script. Now don't try reading all of this right now. It doesn't really matter. But this is the script. And now uh, for you, this will be empty if you haven't configured this before. And what you want to do is you want to copy and paste, but make a few modifications, uh, especially if you're going from uh, metric to inches. I think the script that I downloaded was in metric, and I had to convert everything to inches, which is not hard. But you just uh, you would hate to. Uh, but you would hate to. Uh, get something wrong, you know, and say move five inches instead of five millimeters or something like that. So I'm going to go ahead and close that and I'm not going to save it because I have many changes. So anyways, at this point, my X and my Y uh, are zero, or at least they are for the purposes of this demonstration. I have just a uh, piece of wood here. It's a very nice piece of black limba that was uh, cut out from a guitar. I'm going to put my touch plate down, and I've already checked to make sure I have continuity. I'm coming over here to my Mach 3, and under tool information, I'm going to hit Auto Tool Zero. Down it goes. So what the script does is it uh, first checks to make sure that the uh, that the circuit is indeed open and that uh, the plate is not currently grounded. And if it is grounded, then it'll uh, give you an error message. Next is the script moves the uh, will move your gantry down uh, at and I have mine set for 10 inches a minute for a maximum of two inches. So if you're sitting too high, it'll uh, it'll drop and then. Uh, uh, realize it's not hitting anything, something must be wrong, and then it'll abort. Uh, in this case, uh, in this case, uh, I have my retraction to be five inches. And if you look at, uh, actually, I'm sorry, four inches. And if you look at uh, my Z here, now it's uh, it's uh, four inches above your work uh, your work piece. Now the reason that I do this is. Uh, I like to, uh, at this point is when I'll put my dust boot on, and I like to have my gantry fairly high to do that. It makes it easier for me. Uh, you might not have that much travel. A lot of people, you know, don't have more than five or six inches of travel, and uh, you could risk uh, running into your upper limit. So you might want to back that down. I have about uh, ten inches of travel, so uh, four inches works just fine for me. But at this point, now this is very important. You want to remove your block at this point. I always do that. If I go back to my machine and hit go to Z, there it is right there and that is just perfectly perfectly just skimming the surface there if I'm you know if you get down and look real close that is touching I'm pretty sure you won't be able to slide a piece of paper under there yet if you twist it there you're not gonna mar up your wood so it's very accurate and uh, even if you uh, a lot of guys with uh, uh, metal working machines you'll be able to do this as well and I know a lot of guys that use this method so anyways this that is my touch probe uh, in a nutshell I have a quick disconnect over here so uh, when I'm not uh, so when I'm not going to be uh, uh, when I'm going to be cutting I don't want that flopping around and being in the way and I'm probably going to figure out something else maybe a permanent solution with a little cubby or something there that uh, that can fit in but that's the way I do it and once again, it's not the only way to do it, but that's the way I do it. And I uh, hope this is help for you, helpful for you. Thank you. Bye-bye.